September is mushroom month, and although I think we should be celebrating mushrooms all year long, it doesn't hurt to spend a little bit of extra time to pay attention to some of those mushrooms that might not get as much spotlight in the mainstream. So this is going to be a three-part video series where every video we're going to be talking about 10 different mushrooms that are super cool, but you may or may not have heard of them before. So without further ado, let's jump into the first 10 mushrooms. <laughs> So first up, we have the flower pot mushroom. And although there's not actually one in here right now, this is typically where they show up, in your flower pot. This mushroom is known as Luso Caprinus Birnbaumii. It's yellow and quite exotic looking, which is why often when people find it, they'll take a picture of it and post it on Facebook. In fact, there's even, you know, in the mushroom community, a group that kind of makes fun of all these questions of people asking, what is this mushroom in my flower pot? And I think that's a little insincere because it's actually a really cool mushroom. Now, this is a warm weather mushroom. It grows on decaying plant matter, and it's often found in greenhouses and obviously flower pots. Although this mushroom looks super cool, it is not edible, so if you do find it in your flower pot, don't consider harvesting it for dinner. Next up is Chicken of the Woods, otherwise known as Latoporus sulfurius. The mushroom is kind of orange and bright yellow, which is why it gets the name sulfurius. This mushroom is pretty popular among mushroom hunters where you can find it growing in big clusters at the base of hardwood trees. It's bright and super eye-catching, and it can get really, really big. In fact, the Guinness record for this one is over 100 pounds. Just don't mistake Chicken of the Woods for Hen of the Woods. Hen of the Woods is maitake, a completely different mushroom, which is also awesome, but it just goes to highlight the complications when using common names. Now, Chicken of the Woods is edible, but apparently a lot of people that eat it might get stomach upset, so maybe it's not edible for everybody, but it's still super cool to find. Apparently, it's also able to be cultivated, although I haven't grown it myself, I don't really know anybody that's grown it, but apparently you can grow this mushroom, so it might be worth a shot. Next up, we have the green elf cup. Now, this one is really cool. You may have been walking around in the woods before and see a piece of wood that looks like treated lumber, but that green staining is actually from the mycelium of a mushroom known as Chlorocyborea originescens, otherwise known as the green elf cup. Seeing this green staining is pretty common, but seeing the actual fruiting bodies is a lot more rare. Now, if you do see them, they actually show up in huge numbers, and they form these tiny little bright green mushrooms that are cup-shaped, which is why they get the name Green Elf Cup. But what's really cool about this mushroom is that it was actually used to make fine art and furniture as long ago as the 15th century. Italian artisans would add this green wood into their pieces using a technique called intarsia. So next time you're walking around in the woods and see some treated lumber, it's actually just a super cool mushroom. Most people have heard of lion's mane, but what you might not have heard of is its lesser known cousin, Parisium coralloides, otherwise known as the coral tooth fungus. Parisium coralloides is similar to lion's mane in a lot of ways. It grows on dead or decaying logs, it has teeth or spines instead of gills, but it does differ from lion's mane in one important regard. Lion's mane has these kind of tight snowball-like formations with the teeth growing off of those, whereas Heresium coralloides, or the coral tooth fungus, grows in all these crazy branches that grow all over the place and then the teeth come off of those branches. Now, if you can find it, it is a delicious gourmet edible mushroom that tastes very similar to true lion's mane, although it's often a lot smaller and maybe harder to clean and deal with, but if you can find it and and of course, if you can identify it, it is a delicious edible mushroom. But what would be interesting to know, and I don't actually know this, but interesting to find out, is whether or not the uh, Heresium coralloides has the same nootropic or brain-boosting benefits as its much more famous cousin, the lion's mane mushroom. But still, either way, whether or not it has those benefits, it's still a super cool mushroom to find in the wild, and I highly recommend seeking it out. Another mushroom that you might mistake for lion's mane is something called the crown-tipped coral, otherwise known as astromyces. Mycetes pixidatus. It's super cool looking and produces these intricate fruiting bodies that look like coral and most uniquely actually have a crown tip on them. If you look really closely, you can see three little points and it looks like a little crown, which is of course where it gets the name. Now it might be confused with other coral fungus or other coral looking mushrooms, but not many of them grow on wood, whereas Astromyces pixidatus does grow on wood. Now crown tipped coral is considered edible. I have tried it, but to be honest, it's not really worth it. The amount that you can harvest is really not that much. And then, you know, once you cook it up, it's really not that much either. And in my opinion, there's just so many other better mushrooms to try than the crown tip coral. Still, it is a pretty cool mushroom to find and it's definitely cool to look at. And again, look for kind of well decayed logs after a really good rain and you might find yourself some crown tip coral. What would you call a mushroom that smells like maple syrup and can be used in cookies and ice cream? Well, you might want to call it the candy cap, which is the name of a group of lacteria species that are known for their aromatic properties. And 
it really does smell like maple syrup. It's amazing. Now, these mushrooms are not cultivated, they're mycorrhizal, but they can be harvested in the west coast of the United States. Smell is one way to identify them, of course, but they don't smell as potent when they're fresh. That smell of maple syrup really gets a lot more intense as the mushroom dries. So even though it could be tempting, I wouldn't suggest running around in the woods looking for these yet. They can be kind of hard to identify, and you might mistake them for other LBMs or little brown mushrooms that might be poisonous, some of them even deadly poisonous. So it's best to just pick these up if you can find them in the store. Speaking of poisonous mushrooms, the next one I want to talk to you about is called the vomiter, and as you can imagine, it can make you quite sick. The species is Chlorophyllum molybdates. It's also known as the false parasol, and it kind of superficially looks like shaggy mane mushrooms or other parasols. Combine that with the fact that it's widespread and easily grows on front lawns, and you can pretty quickly realize why it's responsible for the majority of mushroom poisonings in the US. And although luckily it's not deadly poisonous, it can still produce some really violent reactions. This mushroom differs from other parasols and can be identified by its super unique green spore print, which just so happens to be the same color your face would turn if you ever tried to consume it. Next up is a mushroom that's so unique that taxonomists actually had to create a whole new genus just to fit it in. The mushroom is known as Rhododus palmatis, otherwise known as the wrinkled peach or the rosy vein cap. And I came back to this log thinking I would find it again because I found it two years in a row and it's not here, but that's okay because I have some really cool clips of it either way. This mushroom is definitely photogenic. It's pink in color and has a really unique cap that has these nets or folds on top of it. Now, it is actually pretty rare to find this mushroom. And at one point in some countries, it was actually put on the endangered species list. But if you are in an area where it grows, it might not be that hard to find it. So I guess worldwide it's rare, but in certain areas it can be quite common. Again, I found it multiple years in a row in Alberta, Canada where I live, but then again, maybe I'm just lucky. Rhododus palmatis usually grows on dead logs and it quite often will grow in little clusters. And it also kind of has this unique property where it leaks like a metabolite. So there's little droplets of this liquid that will be under or on top of the mushroom, which is kind of cool to see. The rosy vein cap is a perfect example of a mushroom that's super cool to find, even though you would never want to eat it. It's kind of small, and although it's not technically poisonous, it's definitely considered inedible. The texture is super rubbery, and you just wouldn't want to harvest it and eat it anyway. With a mushroom this beautiful, just taking a photo or video is good enough. If you see a soccer ball in a big open field or in the middle of the woods like this, you might want to take a closer look because it could actually be a giant puffball mushroom. Now there's lots of different species of puffball, but around here where I live, the giant puffballs are either Calvatia gigantea or Calvatia buniana. Now this one is definitely older than I would have liked to have found for this video, but it will have to do. Although I found this one in the woods, you'll most likely find them in open fields or on hilltops where they'll often grow. And the reason they grow on hilltops is when they eventually sporulate, they can burst open and spread their spores everywhere. Now, puffball mushrooms, the inside of them when they're younger is solid and white and actually edible. And it is an edible mushroom if you can find them when they're young enough. But eventually that inside will turn into kind of a, a brown kind of spore powder. And that's where the spores will eventually come out of. Now, if you're interested in puffballs, you want to be careful not to pick them when they're too young or too small because some other mushrooms, especially poisonous species of Amanita, can sometimes resemble puffballs when they're still in their egg shape. But if you can find them and you slice them open, they're nice and beautiful and white on the inside and firm, they can be an edible mushroom. But again, as with any mushroom, don't eat it or consume it unless you're 1000% sure that you know exactly what it is. Still, puffballs are cool to find, especially because if they're big enough, you can really spot them from a mile away. Finally, today we have honey mushrooms, otherwise known as Armillaria melia. And no, this isn't another candy cap. This mushroom tastes nothing like honey, but it does have a honey color, which is where it gets its name. This mushroom is parasitic that attacks both healthy trees and weakened trees, and it will often fruit at the base of the trees in these huge clusters. Actually, interestingly enough, the largest organism in the world is a honey fungus. It's growing in Oregon, and it's not like it's one giant mushroom, but it's all the mycelial threads that grow underground and all together take up about three and a half square miles, which is one humongous fungus. And unbelievably, it's all part of the same organism, which is a honey mushroom. Now, honey mushrooms typically fruit in the fall and they are seeked out by foragers, but if you are looking for them, they're definitely not a beginner's mushroom. You wouldn't want to confuse it with one of the poisonous lookalikes. Mushrooms are fascinating and there's always something new to learn. So I hope you learned something new. And if you like mushroom content, be sure to like the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to stay tuned for more mushroom videos on the lesser known mushrooms.